Food safety is a dynamic issue. New issues require constant updating of focus and technology. These range from new emerging pathogens or new food and pathogen associations to being prepared for potential deliberate threats of food contamination to the food supply. Food safety professionals have key roles in protecting the nation's food supply and consumers' health and safety. The application of new technology is particularly important when examining the scientific laboratory component of the food safety program. Inspectors are charged with examining food facilities. These include restaurants, grocery stores, small independent businesses, specialty shops, warehouses, distribution facilities and manufacturing plants, anywhere food is processed, held, stored or sold for compliance with safety and sanitary standards. The food laboratory includes scientists and technicians with special skills in chemistry, molecular biology, forensics, microbiology, and food science, to name a few. They analyze food to assure safety, wholesomeness, and conformance with label information. The laboratory can be viewed as an expansion of the field inspection and is a key component to assuring safety and consumer protection. The inspection process is done through the eyes and expertise of the inspector who physically examines and documents the facility's compliance with environmental and food safety standards. The laboratory provides appropriate analytical information not available by field activities alone. The laboratory can reinforce, document, validate and expand inspectional findings. There are several reasons samples are collected and submitted to the laboratory. The first is to document and expand the inspection. If a firm is serving or processing a potentially hazardous food or if contamination is suspected, the inspector may collect and submit a sample for analysis or a sample may be collected as a follow-up to previous laboratory or, or inspection findings. In addition, sample collection can be part of a headquarters directed program for specific routine surveillance or to assist in monitoring a targeted area of regulatory concern. It can also be collected as part of a foodborne illness investigation or as a result of suspected tampering or bioterrorism threat. Whatever the reason, the inspector must be prepared with proper tools to collect and document the sample and provide information as to the reason for collection. He must also be prepared to maintain sample integrity until receipt by the laboratory. A common denominator to all sample collections is documentation and chain of custody. Chain of custody and quality assurance begin when the sample is collected and carries through to the completion and reporting of analytical results. Everyone involved must be prepared to recall from their own documentation the details of the sample identification and its sampling, packing, shipping, receipt, analysis and reporting. Inspectors and analysts may be called to testify a year or more later in a legal proceeding as to details of these activities. Having properly collected, documented, and packaged the samples, we have arrived at the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Food Laboratory. This state laboratory has graciously permitted us to tour their facility to introduce you to the laboratory environment. You will note that the laboratory is kept secure. It is the beginning of the laboratory's sample security that the inspector began as a chain of custody at time of collection. The samples must be protected from external tampering or mix-up, key issues in any legal proceeding. First, the sample custodian opens the sample shipping container and verifies the condition of the shipping container, the paperwork, and the condition of the samples. He is continuing the chain of custody that the inspector began in the field. The sample collection and all the analysis are legally worthless without proper documentation and chain of custody. After verifying and matching the sample collection report to sample collection identification, a laboratory number is assigned which follows the sample through the laboratory to final reporting. Each jurisdiction will have its own procedures, but the core information is assured. The samples are then stored under lock until needed by the appropriate analyst. 
In this laboratory, shelf-stable samples are locked in bins, while temperature-sensitive samples are kept in either locked refrigerators or freezers as appropriate. Now that our samples are secure, let's see what types of analysis may be done. Obviously, we don't have time to see everything that the laboratory can do, but we will highlight some of its many capabilities to give you a feel for the laboratory's work. The laboratory's scientific and technical staff perform physical, chemical, biological, molecular biological, nutritional, microbiological, and other special analysis on foods, food ingredients, and food packaging. Physical testing includes sensory testing, extraneous material isolation and identification. That's a sophisticated term for filth analysis, such as insects, hairs, and other obnoxious contaminants. And foreign material, such as glass, metal fragments, and foreign plant material, for example. Today, the technical staff is preparing baked samples for examination for insect and hair contamination. Insects that inhabit processing areas are different from those that inhabit fields, and similarly, certain hairs have greater food sanitation significance. Rodent hairs and other animal hairs indicate unsanitary conditions, while human hair indicates lack of required hair restraints. Here, some products from a bakery cited for presence of rodents are being sieved. The issue being, did the rodents contaminate the food or just the environment? The food matrix is removed by digestion, leaving the fiber and other extraneous material to be viewed under a wide field microscope for suspect particles. Hairs, such as this rodent hair, are removed and confirmed under a higher-powered microscope, which reveals the characteristic structure that identifies it as a rodent. Insects are generally identified by their fragments that survive processing, usually the chewing mandibles which are distinct to the insect and hence are used to identify the insect. Needless to say, samples collected for these analyses, and really all samples, must be carefully packaged and shipped so that there is no opportunity for cross-contamination or compromise of the sample container. The chemistry section must provide a broad spectrum of technical capabilities. Special chemical analyses such as pesticide and drug residues, as well as forensic capabilities, are valuable assets to a food safety program. Scientists in this chemistry area perform analysis for heavy metals and chemical toxins, such as those found as a component of plants, as a result of mold growth, or in seafood. Other tests may include food additives, such as preservatives or artificial colors, or any chemical contaminant or component in a food. In addition, samples may be analyzed for conformance with label claims, such as nutrition information, percent juice content, or authenticity. Chemical analysis can be either qualitative, that is, what is it? Is it present or absent? Or quantitative, which is, how much of a specific component is there? Most often it needs to be both. The laboratory chemistry program requires, as a part of quality assurance, that results be verified and, if necessary, repeated by another analyst. In case you wonder why sample analysis seems to take so long. In this chemistry section, several activities are in progress. Apple juices are being analyzed for the mold toxin patulin and then further analyzed for authenticity. That is, is it pure apple juice, or have other ingredients like water or synthetic components been added to hide inferior quality? Chromatographic techniques are used in a wide variety of tests. Liquid chromatography is used to measure the type and amount of sugars and organic acids, or to examine vanilla extracts for the adulterant coumarin, sometimes found in imported extracts. Gas chromatography is used to quantify the fatty acids present in a food product. Here, the fat is extracted, derivatized, and the fatty acids measured instrumentally. Here, liquid chromatography is being used to analyze dietary supplements for the amount and source of ephedrine alkaloids, an emerging food safety issue in products used for energy enhancement and weight reduction. Other herbal dietary supplements may be analyzed to assure absence of harmful components as well as to determine the level of active ingredient. Another technique illustrated by this laboratory is enzyme-leaked immunoassay, ELISA. 
It is used to examine foods for allergen ingredients. In this particular instance, the presence of undeclared egg ingredient. A positive result is indicated by the development of a blue color. Eggs represent one of the eight most prevalent food allergens, the others being peanuts, dairy products, wheat, tree nuts, soy, fish, and shellfish. ELISA testing also has application in screening fish for histamine contamination. A special type of chemical analysis is examining fresh fruits and vegetables for pesticide residues. Samples are collected as close to the farm as possible, rushed to the laboratory and analyzed. Produce is in distribution channels for such a short period of time, it is frequently difficult to finish laboratory work while product is still in commerce. As a result, inspectors frequently spend much time in trace back and on-farm testing as follow-up to an identified residue violation. The produce samples are processed to extract any adhering residues by blending with solvents, concentrating the extract, and finally using sophisticated chromatographic analysis to quantify the amount of residue present. The type of pesticide is confirmed by mass spectral analysis, which is a specific identification confirmation. These analytical results are important in limiting consumer exposure to unacceptable levels of pesticides and to adherence to good agricultural practices. Our last stop in chemistry is the testing of foods for metals, heavy metals such as lead and mercury, as well as metals of nutritional concern like sodium, calcium and potassium for example. Here, calcium supplements are being examined for any unacceptable levels of lead. This analysis involves acid digestion followed by inductively coupled plasma spectrometry, ICP for short. This technique measures and confirms very low levels of lead and is used for monitoring lead in drinking waters as well. These represent just a few of the hundreds of chemical tests for which the laboratory must maintain expertise. Food microbiology has undergone tremendous technological improvements with respect to the isolation and identification of microbes of public health significance in foods. At the same time, new pathogens have emerged and the technology to detect their presence is constantly improving. Many food laboratories have added special sections dealing with molecular biology to reflect analytical advances which provide rapid results or specific genetic information. The scientists in Florida's microbiology and molecular biology sections test samples for pathogens that may pose a health risk to consumers or that have been implicated in a foodborne outbreak. In addition, indicator organisms that may reflect whether or not a sample has been mishandled or that have established regulatory levels are measured. It is critically important that the foods sampled for testing in these sections be handled in a manner to prevent any contamination other than that present in the food. Aseptic sampling is required by the inspector. Bacteria, molds, yeasts, and their toxins are identified and quantified using some of the newest technology available. Listeria, Salmonella, Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli 0157H7, Shigella, Vibrios and Campylobacter are examples of pathogens which can contaminate unprocessed or raw foods or processed ready-to-eat foods. High-risk foods, that is foods with a greater potential for contamination with a pathogen, have a priority for sampling and analysis in most food safety programs. Let's look at some of these new technologies and capabilities. Samples seen here are being processed for both rapid and classical methods. Classical methods are still utilized because of their standardization and acceptability in regulatory proceedings, as well as the ability to compare data. Most sample testing begins with an enrichment broth. This gives a favorable environment for specific pathogens to grow to detectable levels. From the broth, classical and fast-track methods are used. Fast tracking of results is accomplished through the use of automated systems, such as this BACS PCR system, which is a genetics-based test using multiple outbreaks within a group of illnesses. The PFGE results shown here illustrate the matching of a patient's isolate PFGE pattern to that of the food isolate. This confirms the food as the source of the illness. Another tool used